Hey guys, welcome to another puppy vlog. If you have a puppy or you're going to be getting a new puppy, this video is for you because I'm going to be sharing 10 not only surprising, but very important to know useful facts all about puppies. So let's just jump into this video, right? Yeah. First things first, let's jump into the one thing I know everyone watching this video is currently working on and that is potty training. Did you know a puppy's bladder is not fully developed until they become an adult, which takes at least 12 to 18, sometimes 24 months of of age to be fully completely developed but the good news is that they start gaining control of their bladder anywhere from about three and a half months all the way up to six months is around the time that they're going to be able to really fully gain control over holding needing to go number one or number two and that means you're not too far away from having a puppy that's going to have more control over the bladder but the way that you can speed this up and to make the process more efficient with puppy potty training is what i call proactive potty training and i have full videos linked in my description below but the net of it is is to take them out consistently every one to two hours depending on their age size and their bladder control abilities to go potty even if they're not showing really obvious signs of needing to go because what I want to avoid when I'm potty training a puppy as you guys know I have fostered dozens and dozens and dozens of rescue dogs most of which were puppies what I want to avoid is them having that urgency and that need and desire to go while they're in doors so what i make sure to do is frequently sometimes every 30 45 minutes yes throughout the night when they're really young is take them potty outside to the designated potty area and i wait until they go and sometimes i'll wait 10 20 30 minutes and i also want to make sure you guys remember that because they haven't gained full control over their bladder until they hit four, five, six months old estimated, sometimes when they go potty, they haven't fully released their bladder when they're a really young guy or girl. So that means that you need to make sure that you give them the opportunity to maybe go two or three times during one potty session for them to fully empty their bladder. Many times people say, oh my gosh, Rachel, I took my puppy, puppy to go potty outside. We came inside and two seconds later they went potty. And that's because they don't have full control over the bladder. They don't necessarily know how to empty it all the way when they're just a little puppy. Now for the next interesting fact, about puppies. Down, your boy, touch. Yes, good boy. Did you guys know that puppies can start learning basic cues, commands, and proper behavior today? Yes, even if you brought your home, your puppy home at eight, nine weeks old, you can start working with them and training them today. I am frequently asked, Rachel, how early can I start working with my puppy? I just brought them home. They're only nine weeks old. They're only 10 weeks old. That seems a little young to be working with them. My experience is the second that I bring them home, as long as they're eight, nine, 10 weeks old, I start working with them on basic commands. I give structure, I give routine. I start crate training right away, which I have all my crate training videos linked down below. And the reason is, is one, puppies are sponges. They love learning and they're great at it, especially at a really young age. And I also want to set that expectation up right away. A lot of times people will bring a new puppy home and all they wanna do is snuggle it and play with him and, and kiss on him. And that's all fun and that's great to do, but it's also excellent to start working with the puppy because they are able to learn this early. We started working with P Wally on touch, on the touch command, the down command, the sit up, good boy. When he was eight, nine, 10 weeks old, we started working on with that with him. We started working on leash training, even though he didn't have all of his shots. It doesn't matter. We started getting him used to wearing a collar and a harness inside our home and started walking him just in the bedroom, just in the living room, just in our backyard. One of my favorite things to start working on with a new puppy is the T-O-U-C-H command. And that is because it's great for recall and dogs for the most part love doing this. And the way that I teach it, so this is what it looks like while it's touch, Yes, so as soon as his nose hits my hand, he gets a marker command Y-E-S. And then usually I'll follow up with a treat or a toy. There we go. And the way that you teach it is simply put your hand close to their nose and say nothing and do nothing. As soon as their nose touches your hand, give your marker word yes, uh, or your marker word, which mine is Y-E-S. Some people use a clicker, some people use okay, whatever you wanna do. And then you follow that immediately, almost at the same time as saying the marker word with a treat, toy, or praise. So. Uh, what you could do is he's gonna do it because we worked on it, but you put your nose here. Yes, good boy. Your hand here. Yes, good boy. I want him to do it three times just to kind of show you. Yes, good boy. Because I want to show you that sometimes it's gonna take a while for them to get it. Over time, you're gonna gradually move your hand away from them. And notice that I have, I'm doing this and I'm not even saying the word T-O-U-C-H. I don't want to put the cue or the command to it until they're really consistently putting their nose to my hand without me asking for it and without me having to move my hand and they're doing it pretty quickly, then I can start putting a command to it. 
So you start moving my hand away, start moving your hand farther away, start moving your hand a little bit farther away. Yes, good boy, good job. And then you could be across the house and you practice this every day for a few minutes every day or during mealtime. You could be across the house and go, Wally, touch. Yes, good boy, hi, good job. Sometimes I give treats, sometimes I don't. I keep it random to keep him always guessing, to keep him always thinking. And that's why he is such a good little boy, huh, Wallace? He's such a good dog. Okay, so for this next tip, this is something that a lot of people don't realize and they don't consider when they bring home their new puppy, and it is. Puppies will always tell you what they need when they need it. It's always a matter of us being able to interpret their needs and the way that they're communicating into whatever it is that they desire or wish for. And this is something that's really hard to grasp for a lot of pet parents, sometimes I forget this, but your puppy is not trying to disobey you. Your puppy is not trying to be bad if they're continually stealing your socks and running away your from you. Your puppy is simply responding to what you are reinforcing. A lot of times people think that if I yell no or bad puppy or don't do that or stop doing that naughty puppy, first off, I do not, do not advocate for yelling or negative, negative uh, reinforcement at all for any dogs, but a lot of people think that, you know, a lot of people ask me, gosh, I tell my puppy, don't do that, no, bad, I yell at them, and they continue to do something, and that's because a lot of times when you're yelling or fussing at your puppy or continually telling them no or going, stop doing that, stop doing that, you're actually positively reinforcing them. And what I mean by that is it's not necessarily positive what you're doing, but they're interpreting that. Their perception of what you're doing is positive because they're getting your attention. A good example is potty training your new puppy. There's certain things you wanna look for when they need to go potty, and they're always gonna show it to you, and every puppy could be slightly different. So a couple examples could be obviously sniffing at the floor. If your puppy starts sniffing at the floor, that's them telling you, hey, I need to go potty. Now, you may only have two seconds to respond to that, and that's why I'm a big advocate of proactive potty training. Another really common one that people don't always pay attention to is they, they reach out to me and they say, Rachel, my puppy won't stop nipping at me. I try doing the redirect tools that you talk about in all your videos and they just don't really seem to be working. They come after me. They just seem like they're really intent on biting at my pant leg or biting at my arms. Here's the thing. A lot of times people don't realize that Puppies need naps. They need time out time from you. Just like children, toddlers, or even adults even, puppies can easily get overstimulated and overtired. So if you're having a puppy that just doesn't seem to be listening to you, they just seem to be a little bit out of control, some people describe it, they're getting really nippy, I would recommend to consider looking at giving them a time out. This is why I recommend crate training early on and using play pens and baby gates. Put them in a space that's a little bit separate from you and allow them to have time to settle. One of the most important times of your puppy's day is mealtime. Puppies upwards of 12 to 18, sometimes 24 months of age should be eating three to four times a day. In my experience, Wally, can you sit? Wally isn't even six months old and he's still eating three times a day. The reason that mealtime is the most important time of the day in my experience with puppies is because I'm a big believer of team no dog bowls. I am not a fan of dog bowls where you just take their food, put it on the floor and feed them because to me, especially with a puppy, that's a wasted opportunity. In fact, I have a shirt in my merch store, which is linked below that says team no dog bowls because I believe the minimum, the minimum thing that you should be doing with your puppy is three to four times a day during their mealtime, spend about five, 10 minutes of their mealtime working with them and having them work for a portion of their meal. So an easy example of that is during mealtime and I'll talk towards the end of the video what my favorite foods for puppies are and what I think is the most optimal way to feed a puppy. You can just ask for basic sits and downs and T-O-U-C-H commands. So Wally, can you sit? Good boy, down. Can you sit? Good boy, you saw how I asked for an SIT from a D-O-W-N, that's what I call puppy push-ups, up and down, up and down. I wouldn't do that 10 times in a row, but a three to four times in a row is a really good way to teach them a different way of looking at the SIT command. A lot of times we just ask for an SIT and then a D-O-W-N, but if you can get your puppy to go to a sit from a down, that's next level, and yes, they can learn that. But what you do is you feed them a portion of their meal and ask them to work And if you it. work with them during mealtime, what you're doing is, one, you're mentally stimulating them, which is incredibly important, especially for puppies because of how quickly they're developing. Two, you're building the bond between you and your puppy. Three, you're working towards one of the most important things in my opinion for a dog with regard to their behavior, training, and mental health, and that is teaching them that paying attention to you is incredibly valuable and rewarding. And the way that you do that is continue to work with them and then give them positive reinforcement. And so if you're doing it during mealtime, most puppies are very, very food motivated. Not all, so you could do toys instead if you want. But what's gonna happen is one day, you're gonna be out on a walk with your two-year-old dog that you worked with during puppyhood during mealtimes. 
and they're gonna see a cat run across the road and they're gonna go to lunge and bark at that and pull you off kilter, but you're gonna see that and you're gonna say, hey, Wallace, touch. Yes, good boy. And instead of going after that puppy, good boy, baby, they're going to listen and pay attention to you because you rewarded them for paying attention to you during the time of their life that they developed the most because you worked with them during mealtime. So do not, do not just put that dog bowl on the ground. Now, here is a pro tip.